Good evening. My name is Allison Sater, and as Vice Chair of the Board of Directors of the Illinois Holocaust Museum and Education Center, it is my honor to welcome you to the special virtual commemoration of Yom HaShoah. This evening, we pause in solemn remembrance of the six million Jews brutally murdered by the Nazi regime and their collaborators. One third of the global Jewish population was killed during the atrocities of the Holocaust forever shattering the lives of families and robbing our world of their immeasurable human potential. Some of you, our cherished survivors, experienced it firsthand. And on this day, I am reminded of the story of our museum president, Fritzi Fritschall, who was 13 years old when she and her family were forced to leave their home in Klucharki, Czechoslovakia, and deported to Auschwitz-Birkenau. Fritzi arrived, and one man, wearing a striped uniform, brushed by the children, whispering to her in Yiddish, you are 15, remember you are 15. By pretending to be older, she was spared certain death. Her Aunt Bella, who had arrived at the camps a few weeks before, offered Fritzi a second saving grace, trading her food to move Fritzi into her own barrack where every night she held Fritzi and told her that tomorrow would be better. Fritzi's story is just a fragment of a much longer journey but it reflects a pattern so often found in many Holocaust accounts, the abject brutality of the Nazis and their collaborators, brave and desperate acts of kindness by people risking their own lives, the will and determination to live, and an unbelievable strength that saved one young Jewish woman during the Holocaust who has now committed her life to remembrance and education. This evening, as we join together, along with our partners, Fritzi's story speaks to the ultimate purpose of Holocaust memory and the importance of institutions like the Illinois Holocaust Museum, which is to tell the story. Each one of the victims we remember represents a story, a human life, albeit a story and life cut too short. Years from now, it is the individual stories of those who survived and those who we lost along with the lessons of the Holocaust that implore us not only to reflect on this dark period of history, but to recommit ourselves in our own time to standing up and speaking out against the destructive forces of indifference and anti-Semitism, including those who try to deny and distort the Holocaust. Drawing strength from our survivors like Fritzi and using that strength to raise our voices, not only in remembrance today, but for generations to come. Thank you for joining us for this meaningful commemoration. Welcome. This Yom HaShoah commemoration marks the 76th anniversary of the end of the Holocaust, the liberation. My name is Henry Chaim Jelen, a child of two Jewish-Polish survivors of the Holocaust. I'm currently the president of Sherta Plato, the Chicago Survivors Umbrella Organization of a number of survivor groups from many European cities and areas. We have commemorated Yom HaShoah in Chicago for many, many years. Why? Shortly after World War II, the survivors who had found their way to Chicago came together to commemorate the Shoah. Many did not know where and when their loved ones, parents, sisters, brothers, grandparents were murdered. They used this day to get together, to remember, to remember them and to say Kaddish, the Jewish prayer for the dead. Today we remember a number, and we, today we remember as members of the second generation, as children of survivors, we are here to remember. The Zahor, the relatives who died before we were born, the relatives for whom we are named. I was named after my paternal grandfather, Chaim, whom I never met. We must remember. We came together for the Jewish community and the community at large. We remember so that the Holocaust should not happen again to us or any form of genocide be inflicted on us or on others. Never again. Anti-Semitism did not begin with Adolf Hitler did not start with concentration camps or death camps. The Holocaust started with words, words such as those written in the protocols of the elders of Zion, 
conspiracy the theories, many that still are recalled, these words are still recalled by demagogues who point to others to blame for their own failures and who elevate themselves by stepping over others. We Jews were that stepping stone for many millennia and still anti-Semitic incidences have increased in parts of Europe, in the Middle East, and North and South America in the last few years. Anti-Semitism starts with Jews, but hatred for others did not end with us. The Nazis killed others, LGBTQs, gypsies, clergy, Poles, Russians, the people whom they considered to be against their agenda, others. So we Jews faced hatred. We are not alone. There are now many incidences against us, black, browns, LGBTQ, Native American, Native Americans, Muslims, Far Eastern people, people who look different, people who speak differently, people who dress and worship differently, others. Yes, demagogues <clears throat> everywhere have learned the lessons of hatred and are following it. Judaism teaches us through our great teacher Hillel that what is hateful to you do not do to your neighbor. Words matter. Words have consequences. So today's Achor, remember, is what we are doing. We remember the anti-Semitism, hatred towards our people, which ended up murdering six million Jewish adults and 1.5 million Jewish children. It did not stop there. Where was and is humanity? Never again. In order to fight hatred and the disease of the anti-Semites against all of us, not just in the United States, but the hatred of all, uh, all over the world, we must work together and support the people and organizations who fight this hatred through words, education. We need the truth, not conspiracy theories. So that never again will be a reality, not just wishful thinking. We must support those organizations, such as the partners of this year's Yom HaShoah commemoration. Those fighting hatred need us, and we need them. On this day, it is most important to remember the humanity that it is in all of us. We, and so we can leave this world a better place for our children and for posterity. We are here. Mirzen Ndu, New Samsi C. Thank you. Thank you, Allison, and thank you, Henry. I am Ralph Raybach, Vice President of the Board of Directors of Illinois Holocaust Museum and Education Center. I was born in Gotha, Germany. In December 1938, shortly after synagogues were burned and Jewish businesses are destroyed during Kristallnacht, the night of the broken glass, now known as the November Pogrom, my family fled Germany thanks to my mother's bravery and decisiveness, luck and chance, and several upstanders who saved us. We were able to escape death and travel safely to America. Today, our community in lighting these candles, we observe our sacred obligation to remember our six million Jews who were murdered in the Shoah. We wish to reclaim the legacy of those victims, those whose names we knew and those whose names are forever, forever lost. We light in memory of the six million Jews who died from starvation and torture and those who were murdered in ghettos, in forests, in ravines, 
in labor and concentration and transit camps, in killing centers and in death marches all over Nazi occupied Europe. We remember. I am Estelle Glazer Laughlin. When I was 11 years old, my parents, my older sister Freda and I were forced by the Nazis to live in a newly established Warsaw ghetto. While hundreds of thousands of Jews were deported from the ghetto to Treblinka, my family was able to avoid deportation by hiding in a secret room. My father helped organize the Warsaw Ghetto Resistance Movement, which fought the Nazis until block by block, the buildings in the ghetto were bound and set a fire. My family was then transported to Majdanek, where my father was immediately sent to the guest chamber. While my mother, sister, and I were chosen for slave labor, despite my sister being badly beaten by Nazi, by Nazi guard, rendering her unable to work, we were sent on to two more concentration camps where we worked in munition factories until we were liberated by the Soviet forces. We light in memory of all victims of the Shoah who were murdered in more than 1,000 ghettos in Nazi-occupied Eastern Europe and Soviet Union and all of the other towns and villages. We remember. I am Rody Glass. I was born in Amsterdam, Netherlands. In 1942, my family and I were sent to the Vesterbork concentration camp. We were released from Vesterbork only to be arrested twice more and sent back to Vesterbork. We were eventually sent to an internment camp in Vitel, France, where the United States Army liberated us in the fall of 1944. We light in memory of all the victims of the Shoah who were murdered in the killing center of Auschwitz-Birkenau, Madonic, Treblinka, Chelno Belzac, and Sobibor. And the victims of the concentration, labor, and transit camps throughout Europe and the Soviet Union. We remember. I'm Gdalina Nowitzki. I was born in Kyiv, Ukraine. When Operation Barbarossa began, I was just three years old. My mother and I fled east to Kazakhstan and my father fought with the Red Army. Eventually we returned to Kyiv only to find that my grandparents who had been too ill to, uh, to travel with us had both died. My grandfather died of illness and my grandmother was among those shot in the streets of Kyiv and buried at Babi Yar. We lied in memory of the Jewish 
victims from the former Soviet Union, Ukraine, Belarus, Hungary, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Romania, Germany, Netherlands, Belgium, Austria, France, Yugoslavia, Greece, Italy, Denmark, Slovakia, and Czechia, who were murdered, who were murdered by the Shah, as well as those killed in massacres in Kyiv, Babi Yar, Vilnius, Panari, and other towns and villages, and the victims of kills pogrom after the war ended. We remember. Hi, I'm Hannah Stoller. Please forgive me for my English. When World War II began, I was only five years old. I lived with my family in Mogilev Podolsk in southeastern Ukraine. In 1941, Germans in Romania occupied our area and Jews were forced into a ghetto. Both the Nazi and Romania were cruel and tortured the Jewish people. But once, when the Jews were called to the marketplace, and my father held me there in his arms, a Nazi soldier took a liking to how I looked as I reminded him of his own daughter. He whispered to my father to take me and run away. We ran away to the forest and then Nazis found us and put us in another ghetto. We did forced labor there and starved. My father, Rabbi Abraham Stuller, taught children in ghetto Hebrew and Yiddish and called men together for a minion to pray. Somehow, with the blessing of God, as my dear father used to say, we survived. We light candles in memory of all of those brave soldiers, partisans, the freedom fighters, and those who served with the Allied forces, as well as those brave soldiers who liberated the camps, towns, and villages of Europe in the former Soviet Union. And for the righteous among the nations who risked and even give, gave their lives to help their fellow human. We remember. I am Haley Lapatan. My papa Al, Alan Eisenbaum, was born the second of nine children in Lublin, Poland. His pre-war years were spent in devotion to his family and his studies at the Lublin Yeshiva. After the Nazis invaded Poland, my Papa Al spent the next five years in seven different concentration camps, eventually being liberated from Auschwitz. My grandma Sonia was born Sarah Rifka Katz in a small town near Warsaw. During the war, her parents cleverly hid her with a fake identity in an orphanage where she stayed until a foster family took her into their home and put her to work as their housekeeper. As a hidden child of the Holocaust, she lived the next five years in fear of her true identity being discovered. After the war, my grandparents met, married, and started their family in a displaced persons camp in Germany, Berenwald. They immigrated to the United States where they grew their family and their legacy of giving to Jewish causes. Papa Al was actively involved in several Holocaust survivor organizations and served as vice president of Sherrod Hapleta. I love and miss them dearly as I carry on their values of family, education, Judaism, 
and philanthropy. We light in memory of those whose lives, dreams, and hopes were put out before they even lived. For the one and one half million Jewish children murdered. We remember. We light these candles to ensure the never ending memories of the victims who died, whether Jew or Gentile. We light in memory of this lost generation and what they would have brought to the world in every walk of life. May we recall not only the terror of their deaths, but also the splendor of their lives. We also light to honor those who survived the darkest hours of our history, but it's not enough that we remember. We must teach our children and our children's children to never forget. My name is Sam Harris. I am president emeritus of the Illinois Holocaust Museum and Education Center. I was a child survivor when Hitler entered my town of Demblin on September 1939. I was four years old. I survived by hiding in the Demblin concentration camp and Częstochowa concentration camp. You can see my story on a hologram at the museum and in my book, Sammy, Ch uh, Sammy Child Survivor of the Holocaust. I will now speak for all the survivors conveying our legacy. The legacy. We take this oath. We take it in the shadows of flames whose tongues scar the soul of our people. We vow in the name of dead parents and children with our sadness hidden, our faith renewed. We shall never let the sacred memory of our perished six million be scorned or erased. We saw them, they were hungry and in fear. We saw them rush to battle. We saw them in the loneliness of night true to their faith. At the threshold of death, we saw them. We received their silence in silence and merged their tears with ours deportations, executions, mass graves, death camps, mute, mute prayers, cries of revolt, torn scrolls, cities and towns, villages and hamlets, the young, the old, the rich, the poor, ghetto fighters and partisans, scholars and messianic dreamers, ravaged faces, fists raised, like clouds of fire, all have vanished. We take this oath, vision becomes word to be handed down from father to son, from mother to daughter, from generation to generation. Remember what the Nazi killers and their accomplices did to our people. Remember them with rage and contempt. Remember what an indifferent world did to us and to itself. Remember the victims with pride and with sorrow. Remember also the deeds of the righteous Gentiles. We shall also remember the miracles of the Jewish rebirth in the land of our ancestors in the independent state of Israel. Let our legacy endure as stone of the temple wall. Now, the acceptance by my daughter, Julie Creamer. I'm Julie Creamer. As Sam's daughter, I represent all children of survivors who accept the legacy our parents so bravely born. We are the generations born after the darkness. Through our parents' and grandparents' memori memories, words and silence, we are linked to that annihilated Jewish existence 
whose echoes permeate our consciousness. We dedicate this pledge to you, our parents and grandparents, to all 6 million whose unyielding spiritual and physical resistance, even in the camps and ghettos, exemplifies our people's commitment to life. We pledge to remember. We shall teach our children to preserve forever that uprooted Jewish spirit, which could not be destroyed. We shall tell the world of the depths to which humanity can sink and the heights which we attain even in hell itself. We shall fight anti-Semitism and all forms of racial hatred by our dedication to freedom throughout the world. We affirm our commitment to the state of Israel and to the furtherance of Jewish life in our homeland. We are your children, your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren. We are here. We're so honored to be joined by others who pledge to remember and never forget the Holocaust. In the face of rising anti-Semitism and its new form, anti-Zionism, we, on behalf of the government of the State of Israel, say we will never forget. As the country that conceived and brutally executed the Holocaust, the people and the government of Germany will never forget, particularly in the face of rising anti-Semitism, racism, and hatred globally. On behalf of the government of the Republic of Poland, and in the face of rising anti-Semitism and hatred globally, we will never forget. On behalf of the government of Hungary, and in the face of rising anti-Semitism and hatred globally, we will never forget. On behalf of the French government, and on behalf of my great-uncle Désiré, who survived in hiding for two years, we will never forget. On behalf of the government of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, and in the face of rising anti-Semitism and hatred globally, we will never forget. On behalf of the government of Ukraine, and in the face of the rising anti-Semitism and hatred globally, we will never forget. On behalf of the 50,000 Prague citizens of Jewish origin, who were sent to concentration camps after the establishment of the Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia, we will never forget. As Consul General of Italy in Chicago, in the face of rising anti-Semitism and hatred globally, we will never forget. I'm Yonit Hoffman, Director of Holocaust Community Services at CJE Senior Life. On behalf of the 2,000 survivors who we are honored to serve, and in memory of my own father who survived, and my family and millions of others who perished, we will continue to confront rising anti-Semitism and hatred, and we will never forget. On behalf of Russian-speaking survivors, and of my own father and grandparents who survived Holocaust in the former Soviet Union, and for all of those who were lost, we will continue to confront rising anti-Semitism, and we will never forget. On behalf of Dr. George Brent, survivor of Auschwitz, Mauthausen, and Ebensee concentration camps. We will never forget. Greetings from Skokie Village Hall. On behalf of the village of Skokie, and in the face of rising anti-Semitism and hatred globally, we will never forget. I'm Linda Bauer, born Luba Kleinman. As a daughter of two Holocaust survivors, Wolf and Elsa Kleinman, I light a candle in memory of my other family members who perished during the war, and also in memory of all the Jews killed during World War II. On behalf of JUF, we remember those who perished in the Shoah, and we also remember those who heroically liberated the camps and fought against the forces of hate and tyranny. We remember.
in honor of our cherished survivors, those we've lost far too soon, and those who still share their stories of survival. You each have shown us the power of strength, resilience, and dignity we will never forget. Hello, my name is Bob Morgan. I'm the state representative for Illinois' 58th district. On behalf of the Illinois Jewish Legislative Caucus, we are honored to join you today in commemoration of Yom HaShoah. It has been 76 years since the liberation of Auschwitz, and with each passing year, we lose more Holocaust survivors. At least 900 of them perished due to COVID-19. So our caucus will redouble our efforts towards education of the past in order to prevent a repeat of the Holocaust in our future. With our urging, Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker has reconstituted the Illinois Holocaust and Genocide Commission. We helped secure additional funding for the Illinois Holocaust Museum. And we have spoken loudly and unambiguously against the delegitimization against the state of Israel in our media and on our college campuses. The road ahead will be difficult, but the Illinois Jewish Legislative Caucus stands united in our commitment to honoring the essence and principles of Yom HaShoah. My name is Michael Zaransky, and I am so proud to serve as the chairman of the Jewish Community Relations Council of our JUF here in Chicago. Today, we remember those who came before us and the tragedy of the Shoah. But we also must realize just how far we have come as a people in such a short time. We recognize and remember, but we must also marvel in our resilience. A number of years ago, I took a trip to Tkoczyn, Poland. In Yiddish, the town is referred to as Tiktin. Tiktin was for hundreds of years homes to a very strong and vibrant Jewish community. While in Tiktin, I got in touch with and learned much about the story of Chaim and Reshki, an observant married couple living in Tiktin, raising a family. Back in the early 1900s, Chaim and Reshki sensed the advent of increased anti-Semitism and a lack of opportunity for Jews. They encouraged their young son, Moshe, to emigrate to the United States. Moshe became Morris and settled like so many Eastern European Jews on Chicago's west side. Moshe, now Morris, raised a family here, started a business that became successful, and lived the American dream. Back in Tik Tin, things were not going as well. In August of 1941, the Jews of Tik Tin were summoned by the then German occupiers to the center of the town, and they were transported to a forest on the outskirts of town. When they reached the forest, they were asked to stand in a valley and the German SS forces opened up fire and killed in a mass murder the entire Jewish community of the town of Tiktin. Now I can't imagine as I stood at that site what Chaim and Reshki and the others must have been thinking on that frightful, horrendous day in the forest in Tiktin. But I can say pretty much for certain that they couldn't have imagined what we would be like today. They couldn't have imagined that we would have our own country, that the state of Israel would be a leader in technology, in innovation, in science and medicine, and that we, the Jewish people in Israel, would have our own army to protect our country and to provide a place of refuge for all Jews living anywhere in the world. And Chaim and Reshki and the others couldn't have imagined 
what our Chicago Jewish community would be like, 330,000 members strong and growing, with institutions like this museum and our synagogues, our educational institutions and preschools and Jewish camps. It is, mar it is a marvel that happened in a short 80 years. And the last thing, the very, very last thing that Chaim and Reshki could have possibly imagined was that the day would come 80 years later when they would have a great grandson that could stand before all of you as the chairman of the Jewish Community Relations Council of Chicago and say to you from a position of power and of strength and in complete and total religious freedom, Am Yisrael Chai, the Jewish people live. Chazak, Chazak, Venit Chazak. May we as a people continue to go from strength to strength. Yeshmerava 
מבורך, לעולם ולעלמי עלמיה. יתברך, יתברך וישתבח כפר עציון, ויתפאר ויתרומה, ויתנשא ויתהדר, טרזן, ויתעלה ויתעלל, טרבלינקה, שמי דקודי שבריחו, ברגן בלסון, לילה וילנה, מכל ברכתה ושירתה, אושה. תושבחתה ונחמתה, מסדה, דמירן ועלמה, צ'רוסלם, וימרו אמן. יש לה מרבה מן שמיא, וחיים עלינו. ועל כל ישראל ואמרו 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 Du geist im letzten Weg, wenn Himmeln bleine, verstellen bläue Tag, weil kommen wird noch unser Eus gebänkte Schau. Es wird abheugt und unser Trott mir seinen Dach, weil kommen wird noch unser Eus gebänkte Schau. Es wird abheugt und unser Trott mir seinen Dach. Geschrieben ist das Lied mit Blut und mit mit Blei. Es ist nicht kein Lied von einem Eugel auf der Freiheit.